coming. All right, and with that, it looks like we're ready for our Doom 3 run with Rip Chip. All righty. Hello, everyone. My name is Rip Chip. Welcome to Doom 3. Uh, somebody during Doom 64 said that 64 is the actual Doom 3. Well, here is Doom 3. Uh, we'll keep the introduction short because there's a lot to talk about with this run, so um, I'll get all those little details started. Um, I'll get the chance. Uh, and if I'm good to go, I uh, guess I'll get a count. All right, cool. And a countdown in three, two, one, go. Alrighty, so welcome to Doom 3. So this is a pretty interesting Doom speedrun compared to the other ones. Um, Eternal and 2016 are extremely glitch heavy. Uh, classic Doom is mostly about movement and enemy tactics. Uh, Doom 3 is kind of similar to that, but it has a much more complex movement system because it actually has strafe jumping. And on top of the strafe jumping, there's also stamina management because you have to, um, you have a stamina meter anytime you run, so you have to basically do a balancing act of timing your jumps and, uh, utilizing stamina. Uh, one other thing about the jumping in this game is that, uh, this game doesn't have, uh, ju bufferable jumps. You have to time every single one of them, so that adds a little bit of challenge. And we're also using BFG Edition for this run. Um, BFG Edition is substantially faster. And we're using a specific version of BFG Edition called RBFG Edition, which was built for uh, compatibility with Linux, I believe. And the main benefit to this is it allows us to skip cutscenes, which is something that's available in vanilla Doom 3 and not in BFG Edition's retail release. So, I think there's other minor details about that. The first few levels are a little bit slow compared to the rest of the run. Uh, once we get past like the third level, the run really picks up and it gets pretty intense. And Doom has this, or Doom 3 has this kind of complex movement system to it, but it's not <laughs> mirrored well in the level design because anybody who knows Doom 3 knows that the movement, or the levels can be very claustrophobic. There's a lot of narrow hallways, tight turns and stuff like that. Because it's designed more as a horror game than a shooter, but most of the optimization comes from finding any opportunity we can to use that movement through these hallways. There's our first one. So that was the first level. We're going to Mars City Underground. Um, this introduces an NPC with a voice actor you may or may not be familiar with. Welcome to the dungeon, Steve Bloom. Most Get ready to hear that voice a lot because a lot of NPCs in this game are voiced by Steve Bloom. Uh, I like to believe that they told Steve Bloom he was some overarching character and gave him a bunch of lines, but instead they just gave him to a bunch of NPCs. Um, some other tech to talk about with this run is, like I said, it has traditional strafe jumping from, like, Quake. So there's your ordinary strafe jumps and circle jumps. Um, there's some weird nuances with BFG Edition where geometry and especially climbable geometry can kill you <laughs> if you get stuck. Hopefully that doesn't happen, and if it does, it's okay, it'll be funny, but... Uh, because of everything that can happen with Doom 3, I am going to be a little bit liberal with my quick saving. It does waste a little bit of time to do that, but I want to be able to finish the game. And another element of Doom 3 speedrunning that's there is that there is a lot of trigger manipulation. Uh, certain parts of the map are uh, have triggers that make certain things accessible or make certain actions happen in that section right there before we get to the airlock. We have to get to that bridge before a certain trigger appears in order to save time later on in this level. Because if we don't beat that trigger, then the bridge will disappear and we lose like 15 seconds. So there's a lot of little micro-optimizations with stuff like that. It may not always be clear, but I'll try my best to explain. I'm also commentating this by myself because I messed up and forgot to send my uh, co-commentator an invite before it was too late, so hopefully we do good. All right, so coming up here is where hell is going to start invading. Uh, this guy just happens to be the first enemy we would normally fight. Uh, in Doom 3, NPCs all have very low health values, so you can basically one-shot every single one of them in the game. And it's useful here because it's faster to kill him like that than when he becomes a zombie. But there are other uh, NPC killing strats we're going to use not too far into the run that are really important. And as far as combat is concerned, the interesting thing about this run is that we use every single weapon in this game at least once. 
and with this game, uh, headshots universally on any enemy do more damage than just regular body shots. So when you're trying to deal damage to an enemy, you want to try and aim for the head. Pretty much any chance you can. So we're just gonna have to clear this section. It's uh, pretty straightforward for the most part. If you have a donation, now is a good time for it. We do. We have a $50 anonymous donation. Doom Guy is the original Doctor Without a Border, curing demons in all the regions of hell and earth alike. Nice. Indeed. All right. Kill this guy real quick. So yeah, you, um, this game is actually pretty cool. I know a lot of people don't really like Doom 3, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty neat game. It, they, uh, they made this game based off of that one Doom movie with, uh, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So it's a pretty faithful adaptation, I think. Uh, we're gonna get the shotgun here. I could write an essay on how much this shotgun annoys the heck out of me, but it's still also, despite its shortcomings, very reliable, because most weak enemies in the game get one-shotted by it. Assuming you get lucky, because anyone who's played Doom 3 knows that the spread of this shotgun is incredibly random. It's actually a lot worse than vanilla Doom 3, but even then, it's still really bad, but it's still something we have to rely on, which can be a little bit dicey sometimes. I'm gonna save here just in case. We want to try and clear that so that we don't have to wait on that junk. All right, cool. And one other thing that's substantially different about Doom 3 you'll notice is the lack of music. There's definitely not nearly as many iconic tunes because you don't have the musical works of Bobby Prince or Mick Gordon. But I think it adds to the atmosphere. So we're supposed to kill this enemy to lower the ladder, but if we jump at it just the right way, we can climb it anyways. And another instance of trigger manipulation is happening in here. We actually have to go this way in order for these pipes to clear. I don't know why that was how this was designed, but here we are. And again, this level is one of those examples where everything is very cramped together and kind of claustrophobic, so you don't get to utilize Doom 3 movement quite as much as you'd like to. Basically have to do it whenever we can. And coming up here is a door with a keypad. So there are a lot of doors in this game where you have to find a PDA to figure out a keypad in order to unlock it. Those codes are always the same and this is one of those ones that we're gonna do. We have to kill time because we're waiting on a uh, transmission anyways. So we're gonna use this to stock up on armor and ammo for like a good portion of the early run. It's um, There's a lot of keypads we're gonna do. Um, luckily I know all the codes for the ones I need. There's a very interesting one we'll get to later on in the game, but um, once again, this is still pretty uh, steady stuff. If you have a donation, now's a good time. Just trying to get those as much as I can, because once we get to the like next major hub of the game, it's going to get very uh, focus intensive. All right, we have a $25 donation from Astral Storm. Doctors Without Borders staffing off Doom since 1971. Heart, Doom Guy has nothing on them. I right, gotta watch out there. If we get hit by that barrel, it'll kill us sometimes. There's a lot of sometimes in this game, and it makes it kind of dicey, but this is still a really cool run, so... Anyways, UAC Administration is one of the levels where stamina management becomes very, uh, very obvious and very important. Uh, in... One of the benefits to BFG Edition is in between cutscenes, your stamina refills itself automatically. Whereas in Vanilla Doom 3, your stamina is consistent throughout the entire map, so you can run out after a certain point and just be low for the rest of the map, which is one of the biggest reasons why Vanilla is slower than BFG Edition. Coming up here, we have a very iconic moment in Doom 3. People probably remember this scene. This is the introduction of the pinky. But I will say that the pinky in this game is absolutely atrocious looking. If there is one big downgrade from Doom, for, uh, Doom 2 to Doom 3, it was the enemy designs, because a lot of them are very ugly. Don't even get me started on what the Kako Demon's gonna look like. Alright. Okay, just gonna make our way here to get a P uh, PDA. Some PDAs we have to pick up anyways, because they give us clearance to certain areas of the map. It's basically like this game's equivalent of key hunting. And uh, 
Motion sickness warning in case it wasn't obvious. Uh, Doom 3 has an insane amount of recoil when you get hit. So enemies who hit hard, like the pinky, will cause the screen to just fling uncontrollably and it becomes an absolute nightmare to get through. Sometimes. All right, so now we're going on to Alpha Labs. Alpha Labs is what I consider to kind of be the first gatekeeper of the run. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of really crazy tech yet, but this is where it starts to get introduced. In particular, the first thing we're gonna be doing is a ramp jump, which is something that exists in Quake Engine games, where you can basically use slopes to give yourself a jump boost. Missed it there, that's not that big of a deal. Okay, that's kind of bad. Uh, hopefully I get it this time. Okay, this is gonna give this another try. I don't want to, like, try it too much without quick save, quick loading because this room can get very flooded with enemies and really hard to get through. All right, we beat the laser, though. That's important. That laser does a lot of damage. You don't want to get hit by it. If you do get hit by it on easy, it's not that big of a deal, but... You, it, with a game like this, you want to have as much health on backup as you can, even on the easier difficulties. Mainly for that right there. You have to go through that fire. It's faster on easy to do that, but you lose a lot of health. If you try to do that on Nightmare, you're going to die. And so there is one of the newer enemies of Doom 3, the Maggots. They are absolute pushovers and one of the weakest enemies in the game. Uh, one criticism I have of Doom 3 is that the enemies in this game are incredibly weak like across the board. They're all very easy to take out. A lot of enemies, if you're lucky, can actually get one-shotted with the shotgun if you get good luck and you hit them in the head. We're not always gonna do that though because it's not terribly reliable to do. And we're gonna do a jump here. So coming up here is a lot of things happening at once. I'm gonna do an explosive jump to get a PDA to get access to the next area. This saves a good amount of time. Just gotta get it real quick. and we use the pistol to time it. And so this room coming up here, I gotta be careful. We have to clear out this room as fast as possible because there's NPCs in the other room. One of them is Sergeant Campbell, and he happens to be carrying a BFG. So his NPC isn't even just holding a prop, he's holding an actual BFG. So we now have the BFG this early in the game. That being said though, we only have four shots for it, so we have to use them in very specific points. We're gonna wait here to bypass a collision. There we go. Yeah, so you might think it's kind of crazy that we get the BFG this early, and it will be. When you see how we use it the first time, it's gonna be kind of nutty, but uh, we only have four rounds in the BFG until we get to Delta Labs, which is a fair bit of time away from this point. I'm gonna crawl through here. And Delta 2 is probably like the least, like, at a technical level out of Delta Labs. But you still wanna, you know, get through it as clean as you can. It's kinda where it comes down to. Uh, one big skip that happens in this uh, is there's a dark maze you have to navigate. And you're supposed to have a, a NPC guide you with a flashlight to get there. Uh, we don't wanna do that. So one thing with uh, this version of BFG Edition is we have a bunch of settings changed visually. So the game's a lot brighter in case you might have been wondering that. It's a lot easier to tell where you're going, which is a good thing, because trying to do this in the dark would be a nightmare. And we don't want to have to spend our time defending that guy with the flashlight. All right, sweet, we got that first try. So yeah, if you know where you're going and you have enough visibility, you can do very specific uh, strafe jumps to skip over different parts of this uh, maze, and you're basically out of there. And now coming up here is my least, one of my least favorite tricks in the entire game. It's incredibly dumb. It's in theory really easy, but you have to use geometry for platforming that's not designed for it and it becomes a total mess and hopefully we get a first try. Oh, nice. That looks a lot easier than it is. That collision on the health dispenser is very, very weird and can be very slippery. Okay. Delta 3 has some very intense speed tech coming up very early on. I'm not joking when I say that this part might be one of the hardest sections in the entire game, so hold on. I need to very much focus, okay? Okay, okay, okay. that's good. All right. 
okay, okay, we got this. If you just hold the button and move it away, it'll automatically keep going. It's minor optimization. Okay, okay. Oh man, I'm so nervous right now. I don't wanna mess this up. Toxic gas levels decreased 50%. Oh man. Some authentic Doom gameplay right here. Is this gonna work? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. All right. Boom. There we go. Look at those crane game skills. This is why I'm not allowed to go back to Chuck E. Cheese. Anyways, that part is very easy. We just have to clear two barrels out, and we're good to wait for this to open up to get our next key. All righty, so... I don't think if there's anything else big coming up here. Oh. So I'll mention a little bit more about the nuances with the shotgun. Um, the shotgun is very random, like I said. The worst thing about it is, as I've said before, you can one-shot most enemies. Soldiers in particular are annoying because sometimes your pellets will hit their gun and it won't do damage to them. So they should realistically be the easiest ones to kill, but sometimes that happens. And if anybody's wondering, I am playing on easy. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, you should play on Nightmare Difficulty. And yes, Nightmare Difficulty is a really cool run. It's a very different run because you're constantly losing health and you have to manage kill counts and soul cube usage pretty much throughout the entire game. But that's also really hard and I would not recommend it as a marathon run because it is very difficult and very easy to make a mistake. It's already very easy to make a mistake on easy, but you got less to worry about with that. Okay, open that up. And now we're going on to Alpha 4. Alpha 4 is pretty cool. There's a lot of movement in this one. And I mentioned before that there's limited use of the BFG early on. This is the one level where we're going to use it, and where we're going to use it is going to be obnoxious. We're going to save that guy because it's faster to save him. Plus, you know, we're good guys for the most part. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit of a dodgy one. All right. And we're also going to be using grenades a lot in this game. Uh, casually, grenades seem like they're not that good, but they're incredibly great for crowd controlling small groups of enemies like that. And they'll basically instant kill most enemies that are weak. And we also just picked up adrenaline. This is a power up we're going to get a couple times in the run. And it's really nice because I mentioned that stamina is uh, limited and drains when you run. Uh, adrenaline allows you for a brief period of time to have unlimited stamina, which is really nice and just saves you a lot of trouble. I also slurred that word a little bit. Don't mind me, I'm just a little nervous. All right. Okay, I didn't get a good strafe chain there, but that's fine. All right. So we're gonna be coming up here pretty soon on the first boss fight of Doom 3. Uh, I mentioned that do enemies in Doom 3 are really weak. In particular, the boss fights aren't terribly hard in this game except for one of them. And this boss in particular does have a decent amount of health considering how early in the game it is. But since you have the BFG, you can just one-shot it with a headshot from the BFG. It makes that boss fight an absolute joke because that boss normally is kind of hard because you usually are only fighting with the shotgun and grenades at that point. And now we're on Emperor Plant. Emperor Plant is a pretty straightforward level. It's just a lot of movement. Uh, we basically in this level have to go from point A to point B and then back to the entrance and all that jazz. Pretty, pretty linear stuff. This also introduces the, uh, the, the Lost Soul. The Lost Soul in this game is really annoying. I feel like it goes without saying that Lost Souls and Doom in general are kind of just obnoxious. In this game, there's a whole other, they're a whole other issue on its own because not only do they have the traditional thing of being in your way a lot of the time, but damage in this game can actually send you flying if you're not careful. So in some rooms with Lost Souls, you can be jumping and then get hit by one of them and get sent flying right off the edge. I hope to God that doesn't happen because I will not be happy if that's the case. Did I miss him? Jeez, all right. 
And now we're going on a bit of a lengthy elevator ride. If you have some donations, now is a great time to read them. Of course, we have $5 from Big Law that says, Hey, Rip, good luck with running Doom 3. Very glad to have Dwayne The Rock Johnson ripping and tearing with us today. Putting oh this donation God. towards Half-Life Alex, And we do still have that incentive for the bonus game of Half-Life Alex up. We are at 13000 out of the 90000 needed to open up that bonus game. So get those donations in now. Please do. That thing is, that looks really cool, and I hope it gets met. You got time for another one if you have it. All right, we have a $100 donation from Connor that says, super cool to see you get to do a speed run for this man. Crash Team loves you. Aw, shout outs to the Crash Team. They're like one of my longest groups of online friends. Known them for like, God, like 10 years at this point. It's crazy. Shout outs to Connor and the rest of the Crash Team. Um, and yeah, that one elevator ride we took down, we have to take it back up again. And we're gonna use our second instance of the BFG. Uh, we're only going to use one round for this one because it's just going to help with crowd clearing. The BFG works kind of similar to how it usually does in Doom, but the main difference is that the explosive damage from the main BFG cell is enormous, and the tracers will... The tracers and how they kill enemies in this game can be very hit or miss. You're either going to kill everything you want to or you're going to kill, like, one thing. And we got most things there, so that's good. All right, so we're almost at the end of Impro Plant. Uh, I have to be very careful in this next couple of rooms because there's some things can, that can be minor inconveniences that can kill me. Uh, I could get my jump eaten here, which didn't happen. And then if you're not lucky, this imp can throw a fireball at that barrel and it will blow up right next to you and you will die. All right that end of the level nice all right it's communication transfer this is a level with some pretty cool speed tech about halfway through it um in case it wasn't obvious here uh, whenever you're outside on the surface of mars you uh you have an oxygen meter but most of the time you're not outside long enough for it to matter because a lot of the areas are short or we have skips for them so it's one of those, th this game had a lot of weird mechanics just thrown into it. The stamina alone was kind of annoying, but it's not as annoying as it is in like Return to Castle Wolfenstein, because in that game you also lose stamina for jumping. If that was the case for this, I wouldn't run this game, because that would just be too much. All right, I'm gonna save here just for safety, because again, I mentioned it before, but ladders are one of the most dangerous things in this game. Because this game does not handle Doom Guy getting stuck in things very well. If you get stuck on a ladder, the game will just default to killing you after a few seconds. Alrighty. So coming up here, we're going to be going to a room that's going to give us the chainsaw. Now, I stand by the claim that the Doom 3 chainsaw is probably the most overpowered chainsaw in Doom. People could say something like how Eternal in 2016s is better because it insta-kills, but the thing is, those things run on ammo. This thing has unlimited ammo and its DPS is absolutely bonkers. So you can kill a lot of enemies really quickly with this thing. So we are going to be using that quite a bit. Alright, I'm going to be careful here because this part gets really dicey. Uh, there's a little bit of randomness here with Caco Demons, those ugly things there. That's Oh my goodness, that's really bad. Um, I'm just gonna reload because this went really south really quickly. Kako demons, like I said, are in this section kind of random. You gotta watch out for their attacks. And then we're gonna do a ramp jump here, which is kind of tricky. I'm gonna kill these guys out of safety because I don't want them in my way. And normally we're supposed to ride this thing all, all over the place to get to this point, but if we ramp jump up there and then just make a careful jump across, we're good to go. All right, that's done, and we got one more ramp jump we have to do after this. We're going to take a quick fall here. Uh, in case you don't know, fall damage in Doom 3 is kind of crazy at times. Sometimes it's pretty forgiving, other times you will just die instantly. You just kind of have to know where it's safe to fall in the game. And here's Berserk. So Berserk's interesting in Doom uh, 3 because 
instead of it just applying to your fists, it actually applies to every weapon. So you can use the plasma gun with it to kill these zombies really quickly. And it also, another interesting thing about Berserk is that it increases your movement speed. So in any instance you can use Berserk, it lets you go through certain sections really fast. Sometimes it's almost really hard to control because of that. There we go, that's the end of that. Now for communications. Communications has a branching choice situation when you get towards the end of it, where you have to choose to either send a transmission or not. Spoilers, it has no real effect on the game. The only thing it affects is that if you choose one option, it is seven seconds faster in a later level. And that is the only difference. Which is also kind of funny because Doom 3, this is a weird one. For whatever reason, you know how on Twitch some games have like automatic tags that get applied to them for like what genre of game they are. Uh, one of Doom 3's automatic tags is, is a visual novel, which is so far from the truth. I don't know how that ended up being a label, but uh, yeah, Doom 3 is my favorite visual novel. I love it. Clan Ed ain't got nothing on this game. All right. This is another level where stamina management can be really, really hard because there's a long stretch of movement that you have to go through before you get a chance to breathe. There we go. And one thing that's not maybe visibly apparent is that a lot of times when I'm doing jumps, I'm gonna be uh, crouch jumping. It's not gonna necessarily be visible, but uh, crouch jumping is super useful for getting through areas because there's a lot of places you can bonk your head or minor obstacles in your way that can block you. Oh shoot, I gotta switch to the chainsaw here. And also one of the harder things about Doom 3 as a speedrun is micro-optimizing your weapon switching because you do it a lot. So you want to make sure your weapons are mapped in convenient locations. Alright, and that's my little robo-buddy. He's pretty cool. He's gonna help us get through this section. Uh, to optimize this section, you have to basically kill all these enemies before Robo Buddy sees them because then he'll shoot at them. And that wastes time because he's gonna be staying in place instead of moving towards his next objective. It's cute that he wants to help out, but it's not that good. And also his bullets can actually hurt you. All right, let's hope this gets lucky. Yay. I say that it, like it isn't obvious that shooting a barrel is going to miss, but a lot of times I've had instances where the spread for the shotgun is so bad that I will shoot a barrel at close to point blank range and it won't blow up because only like one pellet hits it. It's really bad. <laughs> but for some reason the zombie shotguns send you flying. I don't know what the heck was up with that, but... Like, if you're not careful, that thing can blast you backwards. Do we have time for a couple of quick donations? Yeah, now's a really good time. All right, we have a $15 donation from Grace that says, gotta donate during my boy Rip Chips run of Doom 3. I'm so excited to see him playing at GDQ. He is one of the first people to introduce me to this speed run, and I'm so proud of how far he's come. Good luck on the run. No, oh, thanks, Grace. We have a $15 donation from Smoked Doom that says, Demons, no, you can't kill us all. Doom guy? Haha, <laughs> demons go It's <laughs> <laughs> a good one. Alrighty, um, so here's that pivotal choice I made mentioned, by the way. Uh, we have a second, because uh, Swan's gonna lecture us about what the right choice is. While we're gonna do that, we're just gonna do a crouch jump here to peek out of bounds. It's really not useful, but it looks cool. I don't even know if it's gonna be visible, but... Uh, we want to cancel this instead of sending it because it will save, uh, like seven seconds on a later map. When, when that comes, I'll explain that instance, but the rest of the level is just clearing it out. If you have another donation, go right ahead. All right, and I have if, a... Go Sorry, ahead. go ahead. <laughs> we have a $10 donation from TBCR that says, Hello, hello, Rip Chip. Your buddy boy TBCR here. I thought I wrote something clever, witty, and fine quality in this donation comment, but apparently Skynet has made my brain mush. Good luck on your run. <laughs> you can put this donation towards your choice. 
Shoutouts to TBCR. He's a good friend. Alrighty, so getting towards the end of this, uh, the next map is a little bit more technical. Um, a lot of these, run, a lot of this run is, like I said, just having clean movement, knowing where enemies are, and how to properly deal with them. Uh, so it is definitely not like as glitch heavy of a speedrun for an FPS game, anyways. But I like it because it's just a very satisfying to just go through everything fast, utilize the movement. Watch your shotgun actually hit what it's supposed to. It's it's great. And also, this is the first time Doom 3 has been out of GDQ, and it's as far as I know, with this GDQ, every official G uh, Doom game has will have been run out of GDQ now, which is kind of cool. So going on to Monorail Sky Bridge. This level is pretty easy for the most part. There is a couple of sections that are really really sketchy. Um, first things first, we got to get back out of the surface of Mars. It's like I said, we have oxygen we gotta watch out for. And like I said before, oh my God, he came into the airlock with me. Jeez, that was interesting. All right, I didn't kill that zombie. Sometimes if you throw that grenade, it'll kill the zombie while it hits the uh, pinky. All right, so here we're about to see like the biggest downgrade from Doom to Doom 3 which is the Revenant. The Revenants in these games are really, really lame. They look really dumb and they die very quickly. If you are lucky, these are one of those enemies that if you get a perfect headshot with a shotgun, you can actually kill them in one hit. I hope you guys aren't tired of hearing the chainsaw yet because it's going to be used, still gonna be used frequently. And if you don't like the burr noise that it makes on its own, you'll enjoy this. Now we're gonna kill these. We gotta be careful through this hallway. There's two pinkies. That one in particular can be kind of random. This one, once he sees you, he's gonna roar, which means you can just run right past him. And also we picked up another uh, another adrenaline, so we're able to not worry about our stamina for a while, which is nice. Coming up here, we're gonna do what I consider like the world's shortest ramp jump. This little slope right here gives you just enough room that you can actually do a successful ramp jump even though there's like no space to jump off of. If you time it right, you'll get a perfect ramp jump and it's a very small window, but I don't know, it's just kind of amusing that that just happens to be there and it skips a good chunk of that section. All right. Shoot him. All right, so one other little technical detail about Doom 3 that's gonna be here is Places where enemy spawns like that, if you do explosive damage to it, it can kill the enemy before they even spawn. So it's just a minor, like, time saver. My micro optimization, might even call it. Oh my god, these spiders are awful. So yeah, I hate spiders in real life, and these ones are terrible because they are just horrifying looking because they have, like, an inverted face, and you're never really going to see them up close during the run, thank goodness, because they're just really creepy. People can talk about Zoom 3 all they want negatively, but so, as much as I criticize some of the enemy design choices, some of them hit the, some of them they nailed pretty well, and I think the spider is one of them. And now we're coming on to a really weird little explosive jump. We're gonna combine both grenades and rockets to do an explosive boost. I'm gonna set myself up here. Perfect, first try. That jump is way harder than it looks, and it looks hard. You basically have to combine an explosive jump from the grenade, the rocket, while simultaneously doing a ramp jump. So this is the level, by the way, where making that choice for the transmission actually matters. Because Betruger is going to give you a little spiel here. And how long this spiel takes depends on what choice you make. The choice you made makes it seven seconds shorter. And we also escape that while we were hitting the button so that we don't get stuck in there and we can just climb up to this next area immediately. It's kind of nice. A micro-optimization. Um, if you've played Doom 3, you know how much of a hassle the keypads can be because you basically have to use a mouse on the screen while aiming with your mouse to punch stuff in and it's really awkward and really hard to do quickly. 
Alrighty. So now also we have the rocket launcher for other things than explosive boosting. Uh, as much as I like to use the shotgun, the rocket launcher is, <laughs> as weird as it's gonna sound, arguably the best close quarter combat weapon in this game. Because a lot of enemies go down in one hit with it. And we'll be getting quite a bit of leverage out of it for most of the run. Alrighty. If you have a donation, now's a good time to read. And if you haven't donated, uh, donate to Half-Life Alex, because that's going to be super cool. We have a $25 donation from Fiery One. Rip Chip, you must defeat the demons and go very, very, very fast. $25 for the Half-Life Alex run. Let's make Alex go fast. Nice. Also, these little baby enemies here right here. Sorry, I'll let you continue in a second. Those little baby enemies are called cherubs. They are obnoxious because they're small and they also hit really hard. Make your screen shake a lot. If you had another donation, go ahead and read it. Sorry if I interrupted you. That's okay. We have a $50 donation from Riva Style that says Doom 3 and chill. How can it be better? Helping a good cause, maybe? Big shout outs to all the runners and staff. Keep up the great work. All right, so this introduces the Mancubus, but we just skipped that fight entirely by doing a rocket jump. Uh, fun thing about this, uh, that room in particular, in Nightmare Difficulty, you can't, like I said, do a standard rocket jump because you'll die instantly if you try to do that. But a uh, brilliant runner by the name of Lyco Lega found an interesting setup that only does like a sort of boost that allows you to skip it, so it's kind of neat. Uh, big shout outs to Lyco Lega because he is an incredibly talented runner and has found a lot of really cool strats for this game. So we're coming up on Monorail. Monorail is kind of a lame level because it's a bit of an auto-scroller combined with two kind of difficult tricks. But in the meantime, we can just bounce around with this wall right here. Right. Um, since I never really mentioned it, um, I will say... Uh, Vanilla Doom 3, like I said, it's a lot slower mainly because of the stamina issue, but the general run itself is fairly similar. So if you wanted to run it on Vanilla Doom 3, be my guest. If you ever want to do a run of the game, but want to do it as fast as you can, BFG Edition is obviously the better choice. I think BFG as a port for playing Doom, or Doom 3 casually isn't the best choice, but that just comes down to preference. And while we're waiting on this train, if you have another donation, go for it. It's all you. All right, we have a $100 anonymous donation. Great nice. run, making for an even better distraction from studying. Shout out to that sweet Ronan Kenshin poster in the back. <laughs> nice. I forgot that that's there. Um, anyways, so going when we get off of the train, the game is going to try to equip the shotgun. We don't want to use the shotgun. We want the rocket launcher. Um, so if we time when we f equip the rocket launcher, we can cancel that shotgun showing up. Can be a little bit dodgy. All right, I gotta be careful here because I messed this up. Just trying to try and get on these boxes. It's not very reliable geometry here. I'm gonna do a rocket boost off of this up here, and here comes another keypad we already know the combination for. Oh, we get full health here. It's better to have it. All right, so now we're going to take a totally safe train ride to the other side where there's gonna be absolutely nothing that's going to go wrong. We're gonna make it to our home stretch without any trouble whatsoever, and I can't wait. We're gonna do a really sick bounce while we're at it. Oh, shoot. And see, look, we made it. No trouble whatsoever. I'm gonna save here. It's weird to save here, but this ladder has killed multiple runs on me in the past. Like I said, sometimes ladders can get you stuck and you just die and you don't want that to happen. Coming up here is one of the more difficult explosive jumps in the game. And we got it first try, nice. Uh, that one is really hard to time because you really need to be in a very specific spot and you also need to uh, do the jump at just the right time so you get enough height to get up there. And now we're going to brute force our way through this turret because we don't have the key card to turn it off. Alrighty, so that's that. Now we're going on to Delta Labs. Delta Labs is a very huge choke point for runs because there's a lot of really difficult tricks in Delta Labs. 
One in particular is going on Delta 3, which I'll explain when we get there. This one is a lot of stamina management in this level. Um, we have to get here to activate something. We don't have the proper power level, so we have to get like a key card or something to reset it. We're gonna go through these totally not menacing hallways with no enemies whatsoever. Get this totally undefended data linker. And then make our way back. See, that was easy. Now we can move forward. Oh, shoot, maybe not. Okay, hold on. God, I'm holding shift too much. My jumps aren't very good. Oh, what do you know? All right. Oh, shoot. Okay, so there's also these enemies you may have seen here. These guys are annoying because they're really not that threatening, but when they hit you, it can send you flying. But there's a fun little trick with them. If they throw out their tentacle attack, you can just crouch under it and you won't get hit. A lot of people don't know that, and a lot of people get hit by it and it's frustrating. Another adrenaline here. This next section we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be getting to basically where we need to be and then we're supposed to take another route to get back, but we're basically just going to backtrack because it's faster and we have rockets that'll help make that easier. We have this elevator we're gonna take right here, but it is going to break when we're done with it. So you'd think, man, how are we gonna go back up? Well, listen here, my friends, we have the power of rocket jumping and it's gonna make it very, very easy. Just ignore that guy. This glass is breakable, so we can just hit that button and fall out. Oh. That imp's location can be kind of random. So we're gonna do a little bit of a boost here, combining ramp jumping with an explosive. It's very easy, a lot easier than it probably looks. Oh, geez. It's actually lucky that all the caco demons are there because sometimes they can crowd up in this room and it becomes a total nightmare to get through. And so we have one lone BFG round left. We're gonna use that here because there's a lot of enemies we need to clear out. Oh, come on. So yeah, now we're done with the BFG for now. Uh, the next map, well, not the next map, but the map after it um, is where we're actually going to get, where we're supposed to pick up the BFG first if we happen to know the code for it. Um, Delta 2 is broken up into two parts. It's pretty interesting stuff. The first part we're gonna be spending to get a teleporter set up to get to the second part. But this level in particular is very interesting because, as I've mentioned, there's a lot of trigger manipulation and things you can do to uh, change levels and such. But we've never really run into an instance where you have a level ending trigger yet, so that's what we're gonna do here, and it's gonna be very, very unconventional. Which is gonna save us from doing like the second half of this level. I gotta run through these guys. All right, so we're gonna pull out the rocket launcher, fill up the health, and in this very corner of the room happens to be the trigger that ends the level. You can just rocket jump right up there and you're done. That is something that exists in Vanilla Doom 3 as well. I do not know why it's just sitting there, but it's funny because you don't, can, you don't even need to explosive jump to get to that. You can use like a level prop to do it. And the second half is just also very short because we're going to do an explosive jump to skip most of it. All right. Play it a little safe here. All right, so now we have to do a explosive jump with a grenade and a rocket. And it's funny because you really don't have to do that because this jump is not terribly hard. I messed it up there, but that's just because I want more time to explain this. Um, we're gonna throw a grenade and do a jump here. And we don't need all that height, we just need a slight bit more than what a regular rocket jump would give us. So yeah, here is a very interesting cabinet right there, that's the Martian Buddy cabinet. All of the Martian Buddy cabinets in this game have the same code, because back when Doom 3 was being released, there was like a promotional thing, well not promotional thing, but there was like a 
a website you could go to that gave you all the information. And that Martian buddy uh, locker happens to give us the BFG. So now we're going on to Delta 3. Oh boy. This level is a doozy compared to the previous two parts of Delta Labs. And it also has what I consider to be the hardest trick in the entire game. It also has a pretty hard rocket jump coming up here. So we're gonna, for safety's sake, just clear out some enemies right here. Nice. All right, we're gonna boost up here onto this box. Okay, he should have died. Okay, there we go, now he's dead. All right, so I'm gonna save here. Nice, first try, wowee. That jump is very difficult. And we just happen to have a health pack right there we can just empty into us. So that part's hard, but it pales in comparison to the next trick we're gonna be doing. Uh, this level's interesting because you're supposed to take a bunch of different teleports to get across the map um, and eventually end up at the end. There is a bridge that's been destroyed with a giant gap in between it, and you'd think, well, wait, if there's a hole right there between the bridge, how come you're not just jumping to it? And the reason that we can't is because the gap for the bridge is guarded by Hell's strongest force, which happens to be called an invisible wall. So you can't just jump past it. You have to get very creative. And we're about to do that right now. So I'm going to focus for a second. Hopefully I get this quickly. All right, save here. Ah, oh, shoot, dang it. Ah, oh, don't, no. I told Lego Lego I was gonna get that first try. All right, no worries. Okay, I screwed up there. That was entirely my fault. And also if the lighting in my room gets really dark, it's just because it's cloudy outside. Hold on one second. I need to focus a little bit. Dang it, all right, this trick's hard. But it's not that hard. I overshot that. I'll explain why it's so hard in a second once I actually get it. There we go, okay, Whew, first try, that's crazy. I can't believe I did that. So yeah. That trick is incredibly hard for a number of reasons, and it, I'm about to spout out a bunch of technical jargon, so be ready. So, to get that jump to work, you need to combine a circle jump with a regular strafe jump. If you jump at the wrong time, you will either go over the edge or you'll hit the rail and lose your next jump. Um, then, while you're doing that, you have to crouch jump so you don't bump your head, and then you have to carefully land on a specific point, otherwise you fall to your death. So yeah, that trick is incredibly hard. And I hope you guys are ready for what I consider to be the best part of Doom 3. Hell. Not only is this the coolest part of the game casually, but it also, also, is my favorite level in the run because there is a lot of really cool speed tech here. And as you can see, we lost all of our equipment. All the stuff we worked so hard for is now no longer there, so. We are running on very minimal supplies right at the beginning, but we're gonna get most of our weapons back. We got a cute little face right here. Shoutouts to Blood Thunder. We just gotta wait for this little spiel to be over. There isn't much talking to you here, because this whole section is just super creepy and super cool. But coming up right away is going to be our first skip in hell, which... Normally we're supposed to kill a bunch of enemies and wait for a bridge to appear. However, interestingly enough, part of the collision on that bridge is still there. So if we jump correctly, we can actually make it across and just jump across the empty space. This can be a little bit picky though because there's weird geometry on the floor that can eat your jump inputs. Just happening right now, unfortunately. It's not good. If I don't get this next try, I'm just gonna do this the normal way. There we go, geez, that was, that jump's really not that hard. Like I said, it's mostly because the floor geometry is a little bit weird. 
and slopes can just eat your jump inputs, cause you to mistime them. All right, we're going to stun lock him. The only reason that works is because he's stuck in a single animation during that and he won't attack back if you do start attacking him. And the chainsaw just happens to be the fastest way to deal with that. So this area in particular is one of the areas that showcase just how annoying Lost Souls can be if they choose to be. Hopefully they don't. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of empty space below me and if I get knocked off, I'll die. And Lost Souls will do that quite a bit. Dude, really? Okay. So, we're gonna use the chain gun here instead of the chainsaw because he won't get stun locked. And if you just unload into his head with the chain gun, it will do a lot of damage. Nice. So you got an interesting little skip here. I want you to pay close attention though to the uh, spooky skeleton and what he's doing here. I'm gonna save here just in case I mess this up. So if we fall here in a very specific point, normally that fall would kill us. However, there's a point at the bottom that's sloped that won't let us take fall damage and that lets us skip that elevator ride. Very minor time save, but very good. And here we just have to kill a bunch of enemies to move forward. We have Berserk again, so we're gonna move really fast. Pick up some more stuff here. I'm gonna save in case I screw this up because I totally did in practice earlier. All right, this went pretty good. Normally, if you can get like up to this point with Berserk, you pretty much go as fast as you can. All righty. Looking at our health to make sure we're okay. Looks pretty nice to me. Um, so this next section's a little bit dodgy. We have to try and sneak past an enemy instead of fighting them, but this can be very inconsistent, but he was being nice today, so that's cool. And if you guys miss the BFG as much as I do, it's right here. And it's important that we be very careful with our BFG here because we need a very specific amount of it for the rest of the level. Because we need to, by the end of this, when we get to the boss fight, we need to have four BFG rounds and five rockets in order to quick kill the boss. Five rockets loaded. BFG's loaded. So the next boss is the Guardian, and the Guardian's interesting because the way he works is you need to shoot down his drones in order to expose his weak spot, but you get one period of time where you, at the beginning where you can do a lot of damage to his weak spot. And if we set this up just right, we can kill him in one cycle. And now we are in possession of the Soul Cube, which is the really powerful weapon in Doom 3 that gets demoted to an office decoration on Olivia Pierce's de desk. So the Soul Cube is a really interesting weapon because the way it works is you kill five enemies and it becomes active. They can be any enemies whatsoever. And once it's active, you can throw it at an enemy and it will do an insane amount of damage and it will also refill your life. So in Nightmare Difficulty, you get the Soul Cube right at the beginning of the game because your health is constantly draining, so that becomes a game of managing your kills and your resources so that you can use the Soul Cube as frequently as you can to keep yourself alive. And now we're back to Delta Labs. We lost our weapons when we got into Hell, we got them back, we lost them again when we come back to Delta Labs. Isn't that just cute? Alrighty. Part's pretty straightforward. If you have a donation, it's been a minute, so you, you have one, you can read one. All right, we have a $20 donation from Sushi Elemental that says, Doom 3 is my favorite visual novel. How dare you? <laughs> it has good visuals and was quite novel at the time. Makes sense oh to me. Oh my God, that's actually brilliant. You can read another one if you have one. All right, we have a $25 donation from Lancelot here for Doom 3. The first time I played this, this took me a while at a snail's pace. Uh, I played it at because of being a scaredy cat. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're gonna try to do a little very minor time save here. It's not that big a video if I don't get it. Oh, geez. Okay, I didn't get to time that because I got shot midair. That was cute. Um, 
So yeah, Soul Cube. That's an arch file. That was an arch file. And now he's dead. Okay. So coming up here, we're gonna have uh, Swan, who's another uh, NPC character important to the story. He's gonna give us a card and tell us some important information. Um, but we don't really wanna listen. Here we go. Now we have access to pretty much every other keypad area in the complex. All right, I'm gonna do a minor optimization here where I, okay, never mind, it didn't work, shoot. All right, um, yeah, so we're going on to the late game of Doom 3 now. This is where things get really interesting because of the Soul Cube and having access to really powerful weapons again once we get them. But first we have to get through this gauntlet of a level. This is central processing. This is my least favorite level in the game. It is just an absolute mess to get through. There's not a lot of cool movement and there's a lot of hallways where enemies can just flood. There's a lot of cherubs that can make you fall to your death. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna kill this one so he's just slightly less in the way. We have to be careful here because this section is evolving into a hellscape, and if we fall, we die. You know, just like it is in any visual novel. Anyways, it's just a matter of going up elevators now. Um, once we get to the top and get what we need, we're actually not going to ride one of the elevators back. We're gonna fall because we'll have just, just enough height that it doesn't kill us when we take a fall damage. But the problem with this section is the elevators are very prone to getting stuck because enemies will try to jam themselves in there. And that is not fun if that happens because if that does happen, oh shoot, where's my chainsaw? That was kind of messy. Yeah, if they get stuck in the elevator, there's a chance that we can actually soft lock the level and we do not want that to happen. Oops. So there's what we need. We're just going to take a quick fall here. Okay, the elevator didn't get stuck, thank goodness. Now this section in particular coming up is why I don't like this level, because it becomes very messy to contend with if you're not careful. The enemies can sometimes just get really in the way, crowd you, hit you a lot of times, and it becomes just kind of a total dice roll on how you get out of there. But now we're towards the end, and we're just going to take another wonderfully slow elevator ride to the bottom. And we also have our Soul Cube, which is important. Like I said, Soul Cube routing is very important for late game, because we basically want to use this in specific and unspecific enemies to kill them quickly, but also strategically so that we get health back at certain points. Alrighty. So this next room we're going into, thank God we got out of that level, I hate it so much. Um, Central Server Banks. This is a pretty interesting level because you've got to be very uh, knowledgeable and strategic about how you approach this le uh, level with how triggers work and how enemies spawn. You actually have to run here to spawn the arch vial. We're gonna use the chainsaw to take out the revenant. It gives us enough time to pull out the soul cube and kill this guy with it. One of the most annoying things about the uh, Soul Cube in particular, by the way, is that sometimes it will just completely miss its target. That doesn't happen too often, but when I played this game on Nightmare Difficulty, I swear to God, I, like, tickled the backs of maybe, like, six or seven different enemies instead of actually, you know, killing them. We have to be careful with this particular section because there's this really weird, really weird quirk that can happen with this bridge where if you are moving on it while it's moving, there is a small chance the game will just decide that Doom guy is going to die here. Oh my god, that's that's definitely not what I meant, but that's a new one. All right, sweet. First first time for everything. All righty. Let's approach this a little bit more carefully. I'm just going to stay in one spot. Okay. Cool. We're not dead. We're going to save here so that doesn't happen again. And now we're just going to cruise along this geometry. Rocket jump up here. Rocket jump up there. And that effectively skips most of this level. And now we're going to fight this boss fight. I love this strat so much. It's another strat that Lego Lego found, I'm pretty sure. 
You just do a ton of damage with the soul cube and then unleash DPS with the chainsaw. It's a fun boss fight. And now we have the BFG again. This is where like you're supposed to get it intentionally the first time without knowing secrets. So we're gonna do a rocket jump here. It's gonna look a little weird, but that saves time because if you rocket jump correctly, you skip a trigger that spawns in a Hell Knight and warps the room and that creates a cutscene that's a little bit slow. But here we're just going to be making our way through sections while building enough kills to get the soul cube. Oh, he's not dead, what the heck? All right. So now is what I like to call donation time, if you have it. We definitely do. We have a $10 donation from Midnight that says, shout outs from all of us in Crash Team. Great oh to see our boy Rip Chip running at GDQ. Love everything about the run thus far, so keep being awesome. Good luck with your run. We'll see you on Discord later tonight. Absolutely. All right. So this is the first soul cube enemy we gotta do. There's two more enemies that are gonna spawn here. We're gonna reload and pull out our chainsaw. There's this guy who wants to talk to us, but we don't have time for that, so. Just gonna get him out of the way. Oh my goodness, he's not cooperating. Hello? So yeah, as you can see, we really are setting up the soul cube for specific enemy kills and for health management. Mostly for like the bulkier enemies like Hell Knights and the Arch Vials, just because it's the fastest way to kill them. All right, this is also where the game level design just starts getting kind of gross. All right, so we have to do all this just to get a tram activated to get to the next, uh, to the caverns area. And as you can see, we actually have like substantially more BFG ammo, so we can actually play around with this a little more. Uh, some of you guys may not be familiar with this. Um, some of you guys may have never like seen the Doom movie, but BFG actually stands for uh, BioForce Gun. Uh, I believe that's a line that uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson said. So I believe that it's canon. All right, and after all, Doom 3 is just a video game that's based off of the Doom movie, so. We're going to ride this tram to the next area, which is going to take us to caverns. This is like the last major section of the game. Alrighty. So now we're going to caverns one. Caverns one is probably the most one of the most broken levels in the game um, because there are two major sections of it that we just completely skip. They're very big. Um, there's been some a lot of minor skips in levels, and obviously Delta 2A was kind of a big one too, but this is probably one of the most broken levels because of two particular skips we do. It's a shame because this level is actually pretty cool. It's funny though because this is a skip that I knew about before I even know what speedrunning was because I used to play this game on the Xbox back in the day and was playing around with cheats and found that I could just go straight to the end but we'll explain that more when we actually get to that point. Maybe I shouldn't just spill the beans just yet. And now we just have to wait a little bit. If you got another donation, now's a good time. We have a $50 donation from Chainsaw that says <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite, nice. Oh shoot, that tried got in the way, all right. So with a combination of our health and having adrenaline active, we're going to fall down this thing and take a lot of damage. We are supposed to summon an elevator to come up here and then take a very slow elevator ride down. Emphasis on it being very slow. We can just tank our way through this, get to the very end. I'm pretty sure you can also do this on Nightmare Difficulty too. It's amazing that they didn't make that do more damage to you, to be honest. We're gonna do another shortcut here with a rocket. This is a neat little skip, but it's definitely not the big one. Oh shoot, that's definitely not even a skip now, it's a death. Um, let's try that again. Excuse me, this is like one of the easiest parts of this level. What the heck, all right. There we go, see, I can't believe I got it first try. It's crazy. So we're just gonna get our way through here. 
kill a few more enemies to get our uh, soul cube set up. Get as much health as we can going into this next part because this next skip is the skip I was talking about that I learned about when I was a kid. Uh, so normally we're supposed to do a bunch of stuff to get down here, but we can carefully cruise along the... Sorry. We can carefully cruise along those walls to get to the bottom, but you gotta be very careful because if you fall in the wrong spot, you just die. So if we're very careful, we can just get straight to the end. See, at a normal GDQ, this is the part where the audience claps, so I'm requesting that you guys clap at home. Thank you. Anyways, that's the end of Caverns 1. Caverns 2 is a much simpler level. It's very linear. There is a quick kill strat I'm gonna go for and probably not get because it's extremely inconsistent, but... <sighs> Anyways, hope you guys are enjoying the run. I know Doom 3 isn't everyone's favorite Doom game, but it is a very cool speedrun to me. Um, I admittedly am not the best at this game. If you want to see what a very good Doom 3 speedrun looks like, highly recommend checking out the world record because it's actually kind of nuts. Um, but I'm glad I get to showcase it because I think it's cool. So this level is mostly just running through hallways and crouch jumping while you strafe jump. And again, I can't stress this enough, the hardest part about doing strafe jumping in Doom 3 is the fact that you have to time your jumps instead of buffer them. And you can't even do something like uh, use mouse wheel because it doesn't work when you bind it to it. Okay, I didn't get the quick kill, I aimed a little too low, but it's not that big of a deal. If you shoot a full charged BFG shot in just the right spot, you can kill both those spiders at once, but it's very inconsistent. It's not a big deal if you don't get it. Alrighty. So we have a soul cube ready. We're ready to go on to the last level of the game. Hope you guys are ready. Because we're going to fight the final boss, which most of you probably know who it is. It's a pretty iconic Doom enemy. But how you fight him is very is very different from the other bosses in the game. There's no real quick kill method to him because the way you fight the cyber demon is very different in this game. You basically have to hit him with four soul cubes. The most optimization you can do for that is to have a soul cube ready at the beginning of the fight, which we happen to have. But the Cyber Demon isn't much of a threat. There is one problem with the Cyber Demon. Well, two, technically, actually. If you're not careful and you get hit by a rocket in midair, you can get sent off the map. And the other thing is that the Cyber Demon has an attack at close range, which is his stomp. And that is, no matter what health you have, always going to instant kill you. So you do not want to get too close to him. He does not want to hug. So here we go. Final boss. Let's go. So we basically just need to circle jump or jump around in circles, kill five enemies, get a soul cube, rinse and repeat for three cycles. And you have to be careful because sometimes you can actually outrun your soul cube and you have to wait a second before it comes back. Also gonna save in case I screw this up, because you know. That was very sketchy. Sometimes the Cyber Demon likes to go into, like, really close to the edge or really close to the middle, and that can be a huge problem. Alright, time is coming up once I get the next uh, Soul Cube attack, so be ready on that. Alright, and time. So yeah, that is Doom 3. I hope you guys enjoyed the run. I'm really, really proud to showcase this game because, like I said before, this is, as other than Eternal, this is the la only major release Doom game that hasn't been at a GDQ yet. And it's hard to get somebody to do it because not a lot of people run this. So uh, briefly, I do want to shout out the Doom 3 community and the specific runners in particular who were good with helping me learn the game. Uh, shoutouts to Quick Death, shoutouts to Corpse Flesh, who grinded the grinded the absolute hell out of this game, helped get it where it is. Shoutouts to Leko Lega for being a very talented runner and a very nice dude. And other runners like Draku, Blood Thunder, uh, 30, all those people. 
And also shoutouts to my online friends from my stream community and especially to the Crash team who you might have seen donations from at this point. Good friends of mine. And if you're wondering, oh, what's the time, by the way? Great, that's awesome, thank you. I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was really nervous when I started de-rusting this because it was a rough de-rust, but to actually finish a run's really nice. Um, yeah, if you're wondering what happens to Petruger, uh, here you go. This is setting up for the expansion, which I'm not going to run because that speed run is awful. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you enjoyed all the other runs that have gone on today. This Today's just been a really stacked day for good speedruns. And uh, yeah, if that's all, I will uh, be on my way. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for that fiery run, Rip Chip. We have a couple more donations here. $25 from Matu, still hoping for the Alex speed run. Good luck to all runners and remember to save the frames. We have $50 donation from James that says, I want Sergeant Kelly to narrate my life. $15 from Lost My Film. I don't really know what this incentive is, but more GDQ is more gooder. $50 from Cuban Pete that says, I've always found Doom 3 to be a fun yet different entry to the Doom series. Chip, keep up the blazing pace. This donation is going to Half-Life Alex as you requested, and you can still get those donations in for that bonus game of Half-Life Alex right now. We have a $1,000 anonymous donation. No comment, but thank you very much for that generous donation. $50 from Moo that says, a haiku summer games done quick. A brief respite from the world. Please, hearts in the chat. Thanks to all involved in this awesome event, less than three. Retro Tink LLC is a boutique designer and manufacturer of the popular Retro Tink 2X line, doubling up, up scaler for zero added lag connection of retro consoles to your modern HD TV. Our products enable seamless integration of composite S video component and RGB video to your current setup in a way that respects and preserves the original experience. Visit at www.retrotink.com. Also visit Twitter at RetroTink2. We have a $10 donation from number one contender, fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by daylight, rip and tear chip, rip and tear. That's it for me, everyone. But once again, I'm Sam without a plan, and it's been a pleasure to host for you today. Coming up next is Warframe with runner Cruz Gator. But before I pass the mic on to our next host, we're gonna go to a quick ad. Thank you for watching SGDQ 2020 online, powered by Twitch.
Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online. My name is Sakura Tsubasa and I'll be your host for the next couple of runs. Next up, we have the Warframe Boss Showcase on PC run by Crustcater. But uh, before that, let's, uh, let's read a quick donation here. We have a $10 donation from No One Contender saying, Fighting evil by moonlight, winning love by daylight, rip and tear, chip, rip and tear. And before we send it over to the runners, I'm going to actually uh, send you over to Scent with the prize showcase. Thank you, Scent. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Sakura. Hello, everyone. My name is Scent, and you are watching Summer Games Done Quick Online 2020. I had a whole intro planned out, but I uh, I broke out laughing at that donation because I just got the mental image of the Doom Slayer as a Sailor Scout, and I could not get it out of my head. Um, but we do have a bunch of absolutely amazing prizes that you all can donate to win. Uh, you need to donate from now until the end of that uh, Yakuza run coming up in just a little while, so not a ton of time left to donate. And there are some absolutely amazing prizes you could donate for. Let's talk about some of them. Uh, so from our friend Star Sprites, you know, speaking of that Yakuza run, we have uh, Kiryu and Majima as nice little acrylic standees. They stand up on their own. You can, you know, put them down on the table here if you want. You can hold them. You can do whatever you want with them. They're reversible, which I love. You can have them in either direction. Um, and, you know, there is an incentive right now, actually, to get uh, Majima, Goro Majima, his own little side story run at the event. You guys, you all definitely want to donate for that. I think it's a $20,000 uh, total incentive, and I, I think we're only at like 7,000 of that. We still have a few hours, but we definitely want to see that happen. And I know that you all can make that happen. It's a $15 minimum donation for the two of these. They come as a set. And again, you have until that Yakuza run to donate for them. Let's just set them down gently out of the way. Um, now we have a couple of really amazing prizes that uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to have on hand. Uh, the postal system didn't quite get them here in time, uh, but they are wonderful. And you should head over to gamesdonequick.com and check out the tracker for some great images of them. Uh, Eric Rose sent over some beautiful Mega Man uh, drawings. They are like Vaporwave inspired. Maybe I'm just a sucker for Vaporwave, especially with the Mega Man aesthetic, but they look absolutely beautiful. You gotta check them out. Uh, Wolf Shadow sent over an amazing little acrylic Metar figure. It's it's only about, you know, yay big, but the detail on it is beautiful. If you stuck it on your desk, you would thought that a Met was there. You might be tempted to uh, to try and shoot some lemons at it, but don't. It'll, it'll just hide under its shell. It's not going to work. Uh, we also have this wonderful headset uh, from Epos. Uh, this is, of course, an Epos uh, Sennheiser 670 Gaming Series wireless headset. Uh, you know, low latency Bluetooth headset, super soft ear cups on it. You got Sennheiser quality sound performance with closed acoustics, so you're getting the best sound for sure. Uh, you got separate uh, audio and in-chat ear cup wheels for on-the-fly volume control for different things. It's great. It is an amazing headset. Again, I believe this normally retails for uh, at least $250. You could win one for a donation of $25 between now and and Yakuza. Make sure to get those uh, donations in. And again, a huge, huge shout out to Epos for sending us, uh, I think we have five of them to give away, which is absolutely incredible. Um, now, from our friend Bear, we have this beautiful Velocity figurine. Yeah, Velocity, the speedrunning ma raptor, the new GDQ mascot. Uh, Velocity is, is super cool. And, you know, we I was thinking, how much should this Velocity figure be a minimum donation for? How much should people have to donate if they want to win Velocity? Uh, and I, I decided that realistically, everyone should have an opportunity to take home Velocity uh, and enjoy Velocity's company. So $5 minimum donation, only $5 between now and the end of Yakuza, and you could have your very own Velocity figurine. As far as I'm aware, the only one that uh, I've seen made, seen posted to social media. So huge thanks to Bear for making that for us. And of course, when we're talking about prizes, we always have to be talking about our grand prize. Let me go grab one of the options for you. Of course, the grand prize itself 
is a custom prop from our friends over at Heroic Replicas, and we have so many amazing choices. You can head over to gamesdonequick.com, check out the tracker. It's gonna show you all the choices. It's gonna show you all the information about each of the choices, uh, as well as some of the customization options, and there's an album of pictures of all the choices. There's so much cool stuff. There's a full-size buster sword. Uh, there's a uh, fierce DED sword from Majora's Mask. There's the Chris sword from the animated Legend of Zelda's cartoon. There's, of course, this beautiful Zora guitar, six-string functional guitar here, also available on a four-string bass. Um, you know, it's got a, a lovely mahogany neck here. You can customize the finish to your choice of color. The AGDQ winner of uh, the grand prize chose this guitar, and they actually customized it to be bone white, and it looked so cool. There's actually a great picture of that in the album as well. This is a $200 minimum donation, uh, but it's cumulative throughout the event. So that means, hey, donate $25 before the end of Yakuza, donate it to that Yakuza incentive because you don't have to donate specifically for the prizes. You're going to get entered into everything I talked about, and you're going to be, if you haven't donated already, one eighth of the way to getting entered into winning, you know, uh, your choice of heroic replica prop like this beautiful Zora guitar. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. Uh, Sakura, I am really looking forward to this Warframe run. It's a game I've actually been playing for years. I'm a little sad we're probably not going to see Goss, the actual speedrunning Warframe, but we're going to see some crazy fast strats and some crazy cool boss kills. I'm excited. I hope you all are too. Uh, Sakura, please take it away. And thank you so much for that awesome prize segment sent. We have a $25 donation here from the Peter Man that reads, love the Yakuza series and happy to donate during a speed run for one of the games. 